A very warm welcome. You're watching CNN News 18. I'm Akanksha Swaroop. Now, the U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is hosting a meeting in California today with Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen. Notably, this is part of a sensitive U.S. stopover for the Taiwanese president that has now drawn Chinese threats of retaliation. But what are the key issues at hand, whether it is Taiwan, U.S. or China relations? And how will this visit impact Taiwan and what kind of reactions is it expected to draw from Beijing? We'll get all those inputs and a precious perspective from our guest today. Uh, let me introduce Andrew K.P. Lung, who's a, uh, a geostrategist from China. Many thanks to you, Andrew, for joining in. Let me begin by asking you the basic question. We've already seen how the former U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's yes. visit to Taiwan last August went down with Beijing. China's Air Force has already been flying into Taiwan regularly, even now. And it remains on alert even today as we speak. How do you expect Beijing to react? Of course, Taiwan is a, um, a top uh, red line uh, as far as China is concerned. Uh, the one China uh, policy, uh, which the United States has uh, repeatedly said is adhering to, uh, but just paying lip service uh, in the sense that uh, the United States has been uh, trying to create more and more diplomatic space for Taiwan to play as if Taiwan was a separate country and trying to promote uh, Taiwan's role in international organizations like the uh, World Health Organization, normally reserved for independent um, countries. Um, and of course, Taiwan has lost its long lost its status in the United Nations uh, as a recognized country, uh, whereas mainland China is the only uh, country recognized by the United Nations. But nevertheless, the United States is trying to play the Taiwan card, um, trying apparently to provoke uh, Beijing into untimely um, invasion of Taiwan and trying to drag th uh, China into a kind of quagmire similar to Ukraine. Um, I don't think that Beijing would fall for it, but nevertheless, um, Taiwan is, as I said, is a red, red, red line. Um, and of course, this playing with fire um, is, is, is not getting uh, anywhere. Right. It's interesting that you speak about that red line. Do you think that this visit uh, uh, from uh, Tsai Ing-wen, as far as California meeting with McCarthy is concerned, is crossing that red line for China? For China. Well, definitely, uh, because um, uh, Taiwan is not a separate country. And for the third highest ranking official uh, or, or leader in, in the United States uh, to meet with um, uh, 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 Taiwan's leader, uh, is giving Taiwan this kind of uh, national status, which it doesn't, um, uh, it, 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 it's not qualified. Um, absolutely, it is uh, continue to tremble on China's red lines. But I think that China, uh, this is the second time around, as you pointed out just earlier, mm -hmm. um, after Nancy Pelosi, and China is going to um, carry on with this kind of uh, reactions, uh, both dip diplomatically. Uh, but also militarily in terms of drills. Um, for example, there was a recent drill um, at the same time uh, with the um, Chai Ing-wen's visit to the United States, a drill um, practicing um, amphibious landing right. uh, of certain islands. Uh, so this is a very strong signal uh, sent to the Taiwanese as well as to the United States. Right, and when you talk about uh, Beijing drawing that red line, for Taiwan, it doesn't seem like for Taiwan that they are crossing any kind of red line because last month Financial Times broke the story that it was Tsai Ing-wen who pushed McCarthy not to visit Taiwan and instead meet her during her stopover visit in California. Is that not significant and telling about what might be on Tsai Ing-wen's agenda when she uh, visits California? Well, uh, of course, this is a, a slight step back um, rather than uh, McCarthy visiting Taiwan, a uh, high profile uh, direct visit. And this is framed as a stopover visit. But nevertheless, the fact remains um, that uh, Chai Ing-wen uh, is meeting the third highest um, ranking leader in the United States. Of course, China is not happy with it uh, and would continue to send the signals. But I don't think that this is going to directly lead to war, as I said. Um, 
uh, uh, China has repeatedly said that the preference is for peaceful unification, just like Hong Kong. I mean, Hong Kong was ceded to Britain, um, and then Margaret Thatcher was adamant uh, that she will not give in, but eventually Hong Kong returned to the motherland peacefully. And that's what um, Beijing would prefer. But meanwhile, while the American um, America is playing this Taiwan card, uh, China would, of course, carry on uh, with a kind of um, uh, response um, in military drills, in warnings, in diplomatic language, um, trying to um, warn the United States that it is playing with fire. All right. Andrew, since Tsai was first elected in 2016, several countries have switched ties from Taiwan to Beijing, including the latest being Honduras. And Tsai Ing-wen has accused China of engaging in dollar diplomacy. How do you weigh in on that allegation? Well, no country is entirely uh, philosophical. Uh, each country looks after its best interests economically, diplomatically. And so, um, just like Honduras before, recognized Thai, uh, they had diplomatic relations with Taiwan. But when this relationship um, is not giving uh, the Hondurans uh, any, any benefits, and obviously you would switch sides, uh, as what happened with other countries, which have switched uh, size um, reckon, and, and ditch, ditching uh, Taiwan uh, in favor of Beijing. Um, this is uh, the reality. All countries around the world would act in their best interests. Right. And when Tsai Ing-wen goes visiting to Central America, it's apparent that she wants to revive that diplomacy that they are currently losing out on. And of course, as we all know, that's being followed by her visit to California in the United States. Will the U.S. be able to uh, sort of extend a helpful hand to uh, Taiwan when it comes to uh, sort of uh, reviving diplomatic ties, which it is now losing out on? Well, I don't think the United States would be able to force um, other countries uh, which recognize uh, Beijing to switch sides or, uh, for that matter, uh, prevent uh, other countries which now recognize Taiwan, uh, diplomatic relations with Taiwan to switch sides to Beijing. As I said, countries would act in their own best interests. Um, and then, of course, the United States used to use um, military coercion. Uh, but now this is um, beginning not to be able to pay too, too many dividends. You can see around the world, um, Saudi Arabia and Iran are, 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 are ditching the relationship with the United States in favor of China. Um, and of course, that the Grupo South, uh, a great number of, of these countries uh, have close ties with China. They don't want to uh, to be uh, on China's side all the time, but neither do they want to be at the United States back and call. Uh, as I said, uh, countries are now, more and more countries feel that they are able to exert their sovereignty, um, take their own um, destiny into their own hands. And then, of course, China is the world's largest trading nation and is the largest trading partner with 158 countries around the world, compared with only 58 in, 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 uh, for the United States. So money matters. Um, econ econ economic development matters. The development uh, trajectory of all countries matter more than ideology. Um, I think that this uh, rhetoric about um, a fight between uh, democracy and autocracy is only rhetoric. At the end of the day, uh, is what uh, makes the lives of the, uh, the people in, in, in various countries better. Um, which uh, partner um, would be able to deliver the goods? And that's what matters for all countries. Right. How significant is the timing of this California meeting, considering Taiwan is all set for its next presidential election in January next year? Yes, this is a, a, a very difficult time. As I said, the elections are coming up uh, and, and, and in the not too distant future. The same applies to the United States. Uh, and of course, that the um, uh, both sides um, across the aisle in the United States, they fight each other. Um, uh, 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 um, uh, tooth and nail, but there is one thing they both agree, both parties agree, and that's China. Um, both uh, parties uh, across the aisle uh, agree that China is their existential threat, and so it is uh, easy to play the Taiwan card because they have a, have a bi-party consensus there. And this kind of um, uh, rhetoric is likely to be uh, hype uh, as we uh, go near uh, the, the election um, uh, season. 
Right. And when we talk about that election season, I know the political temperatures in Taiwan are already rising. Taiwan's former president, Ma Yingzhou, of uh, the Beijing-friendly Kuomintang party is in China at the moment. The party is already positioning itself as the big challenger to Tsai Ing-wen's DPP. Will Taiwan's election also become a battle between the United States and China? Well, actually, um, the uh, outcome of the Taiwan election matters a great deal uh, for the relationship between Beijing and Taipei. Um, and of course, that they would have a um, repercussions uh, on the uh, dynamics uh, in the, um, the the Asian Pacific and over the Taiwan Strait. Um, the fact of the matter is that the Taiwan electorate, uh, that is the Taiwan people, most of the Taiwan's people do not want unification, but most of them do not want to rock the boat. Only a um, less than 50% or so uh, would uh, go for independence. The vast majority prefer, prefer the status quo. In other words, uh, just um, neither here nor there and just carry on as it is. But unfortunately, the United States is playing the Taiwan card and trying to uh, up the ante. And as I said, creating more and more space uh, for Taiwan to play as if um, uh, Taiwan was a separate country and trying to provoke right. China. Uh, and I don't think that Beijing would fall for that. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. I'm running short of time. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that we can discuss, but I think uh, those were some very to-the-point observations made by you. And with that, it's a quick wrap from my end. Thank you so much for watching.